Hello guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my videos. And in this video, I'm bringing you guys every rare bloodline ranked from worst to best. Now, it has actually been a very long time since I've done this type of video, and there has been a lot of new rare bloodlines. So if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like this video, more subscribe to the video, guys. Now, the worst rare bloodline of Shooter Life is obviously going to be Diva Ren. This is going to be a boss drop. I'm actually using the skin version, but the boss drop version is it's just like... I feel like Diva Ren, it's very, very good for iFrance. It's not like it's a terrible bloodline. Almost every single rare bloodline is good in some way. But Diva Ren is definitely the worst out of all of them. Just because Diva Ren has all of these abilities that they just don't really work well together. Simply because the AoE of them has been nerfed a ton. But with the abilities, you still can use them for the iframes. And if you're a very good iframe spammer, then go ahead and use Diva Ren. It's definitely not a bad bloodline. It's just the worst rare one. Coming in 16th is going to be Sirachi Akuma. Now, this is going to be coming in 16th. And this is the skin version, by the way. This is Sirachi Gold. It is the skin version. It's going to be coming in 16th just because the only good thing about Sirachi is actually the mode. The mode is insanely good. It's It block breaks. It does a ton of damage. It chi seals. It chi steals. It stamina steals. Pretty much, it's one of the best modes in the entire game, but it doesn't carry the moves. The moves are extremely bad. The first one's only stun global cooldown when it shouldn't be. It's it's kind of kind of weird that it's on the stun global cooldown. It makes it really bad. Second ability is very easy to get out of when it's actually going, and it's not in it. it it's not very good overall. I mean, the second ability is on the stun global cooldown, not the first one. My bad. The third ability you can actually take damage during it, so it's not really an iframe ability. It is a counter, and it's not a great counter either. And then obviously the mode, you know, the mode throwables, they're amazing. So Sirachia only use it for its mode, otherwise it's kind of just a terrible bloodline. Now coming at 15th place is going to be Shindai Kuma. Now this is going to be coming to 15th. It actually has moved up on this tier list. It used to be in the last place simply because the mode got buffed the weapon spec of it is actually pretty decent now it drains mode and chi seals and it's just overall just a really really good move now it does not carry the fact that almost all the abilities of shindai kuma are actually really really bad but if you guys want to use shindai kuma just go ahead use the weapon spec of it in the c spec the mode is pretty much the only good thing the same thing with sirachi akuma hence why they're both so low Coming in 14th place is going to be Satori Red Goku. This is going to actually be the skin version, which is Satori Gold. So this ability, oh, I actually forgot to disable the C-Spec there. But this, this mode is actually really, really good. You have, the mode is like, it's good just for getting around. It's good just for annoying people, but it isn't the best for PvP. But, you know, it's very usable overall. You do get the really, really good M1s and you get the good, you know, you get, you get decent abilities. Just not as good as other modes of the game, but it still is pretty decent. Now, the main reason why people use Satori is going to be the auto dodge. It's actually the reason why I use it sometimes. The auto dodge of Satori Ren is very, very good, even if you can't use it during combos. You just have to kind of judge where they're going to be. First ability is pretty bad. You use it for M1 combos. That's literally going to be it. And then the third ability is good for just combo extending in general, but it's kind of just a worse Doku Tengoku third. I mean, second move. So yeah, Satori Ren Goku, it's a lot of people's favorite bloodline, but it is definitely not the best. Now, coming in 13th place is going to be Ghost Karashi. This, this bloodline really has fallen from grace. It's mainly due to the M1s just being knocked back. The main reason why Ghost Karashi was so good is because the M1s did not knock back. But not only that, but the first ability, you can't use it during combos anymore. You used to be able to do that. It was really good for setting up combos yourself. Second ability is overall not that good. It's very easy to get attacked on this. And most of the time, you will be able to use a special secret ability, which is the M1s. And then the third ability is quite good just for, like, annoying people. But other than that, it's just, like, it's really easy to get attacked during the second and third move. They're not iframe frames and overall ghost karashi just been nerfed to the point where it's just not very good anymore now coming in 12th place is going to be eastwood karashi now this is going to be coming in 12th just because it's been buffed it actually was buffed the first ability does more damage than it used to which is actually a major major buff second ability is really really good for combo extending and starting combos because the horse does stun people and then you have the giant fart attack at the end which does a decent amount of damage and has zero end lag, so you can use combos during it. And then obviously you have the third ability. You, people don't really use it because it's hard to aim, but it is there. And you obviously have the C-Spec, which is a counter. And then you obviously have the weapon spec, which is quite good as well. Now the throwable, you most likely won't use it, but it is a grapple hook. It's very cool to use. And then you have the really cool M1s. Now 11th place is going to be Boromaki. Boromaki is becoming an 11th just because the abilities are good, but they aren't the best. You obviously have this really, really good zoning ability, which is the third ability. It's really good for just zoning people away. Second ability makes portals, so you can bring people to you, to you and stun you. But it is on the auto to cooldown, which obviously makes it worse. Then you have the first ability, which, by the way, I would not use this against anyone that actually like knows how to counter because they will destroy you. But it's kind of like Kamaki's ability, but worse. And obviously you have the C spec, which puts people abilities on cooldown, and you have the weapon spec, which kind of just throws a second at people. Now the second mode of it. Which, which I don't know why I said 4 and 1, but this is the second mode. It actually is kind of the same exact thing, just more damage and more stats. 
Now coming to 10th place is going to be Naramaki. Now this actually has moved up on the tier list due to the buffs. The buffs actually made Naramaki very usable as a bloodline. Third ability is so good. I actually use the third ability a lot now. Just because I love the third ability. It's actually really, really fun to use in general. First ability, you most likely will hit it on people in general just because of how close range it is. Second ability is okay at best. You actually cannot take damage during it, which is actually a huge plus. So it's basically just an auto dodge with hand sides. And then you obviously have the C-Spec, which has the literal best auto tracking of any single move in the entire game. And you will never miss the move. And you have also you have the weapon spec. So yeah, Narmak is actually a very, very decent bloodline now, considering the C-Spec and the third ability was majorly buffed. Now coming in ninth place is going to be Forge Rikoku. This will be coming in ninth just because it's very hard to take damage if you actually do use Forge Red. You're basically permanently on the statue, which makes it so you could completely avoid damage pretty much everywhere. So you have the first ability, you're on a statue. Second ability, you're on a statue. Combined with the Mo Drain stun. And then third ability is pretty decent. I mean, it's not the best thing. And then you have a Z-Spec, which you're on another statue. It actually does a ton of damage to people. And then you have the and then you have the weapon spec, which is just a huge damage ability. So yeah, Forge Red, obviously, just very good. And then if you can get the domain off of yourself, you just avoid damage entirely. Coming in 8th place, it's going to be Shindai Regoku. Now, Shindai Regoku's best ability, which is kind of funny to say this, is actually the first ability, which is a one-hand side ability that does a lot of damage to people. The second ability is also quite good because it is a block breaker. It has a massive AoE, and actually, they did fix it, so it does hit most of the time now. Third ability is absolutely terrible just because it drains 100k chi. Never use the third ability. It's pretty bad. And obviously, you have the C-Spec. You know, it, it summons clones. It's, it's okay at best. M1s do knock back. They're not the best, but... The shining star of the mode is going to be the weapon spec, which is actually a stun ability that is very good for combos. And the throwable, which is even better for combos. But they actually did nerf the throwable. It is no longer 8 seconds, so just keep that in mind when you use this ability. Now coming in 7th place is going to be Minikaze. Now it's going to be coming in 7th place just because even though it has been nerfed, it is a very noob stompy bloodline. If you don't have a counter equipped that, or you don't know how to counter the second ability, you will be absolutely dumpster because it just does so much damage. The third ability is really, really good for combos despite it getting nerfed just because you can't attack before they can do anything. Obviously, the C-Spec is extremely good. It has a massive range, time stop. Don't we really, really need to explain why it's so good. And then the weapon spec is obviously just a counter ability. So yeah, Minikaze mode is very, very good. And then the Minikaze abilities are very good. You can actually use the first ability for escaping combos if you actually use it away. You can actually use it for escaping combos. And if you actually still have procs on it, no, I don't want to talk to you, NPC. If you actually still have procs on it, you can't actually teleport to people using the actual ability of Minikaze. So, when it comes to Minikaze, it still is a very good bloodline. Now, coming in 6th place, is going to be Bankai Inferno. It's mainly going to be for the breakaway. The breakaway is absolutely insane. I actually do use the breakaway ability. It's like this. It's like kind of like body replacement, but a little bit better just because you could control it more and you don't get stuck out of the map. And then the abilities of Bankai Inferno, they're good. They're not the best, but they are good. Obviously, the Z-Spec does a ton of damage, Weapon Spec, and then you have the special M1. So yeah, when it comes to Bankai Inferno, it's kind of carried by the breakaway move. Now, coming in 5th place is going to be Raiju Kenichi. Raiju Kenichi is kind of carried by its mode. Its mode is absolutely amazing, but it actually was nerfed. There's now a cooldown on the low HP mode version of it, which makes it significantly worse than it actually was before. But when it comes to Raiju Kenichi, the abilities are actually really, really good for combo extending. The first ability is kind of hard to hit sometimes, just because the hitbox on it is not the best in the world now. And the third ability is obviously still the amazing combo extender it always was. So yeah, Raiju Kenichi is still very, very, very decent as a bloodline, but it's kind of mode carried now. Now coming in 4th place, it's going to be Shiro Glacier. It's mainly going to be because of its mode. Yet again, another mode carried bloodline. But obviously you have the extremely good M1s, uh, the same as the other good ones. But the weapon spec is insane. The hitbox on it is actually like ludicrous. It speeds you up. It does a ton of damage. It's an iframe. It's just a ludicrous ability. The first ability is very good in general. Second ability is actually very good in general. And obviously you do have the third ability, which is a stun, not in the second one, cooldown, which actually does a ton of damage. So Shiro Glacier is actually a very, very good bloodline. It's one of those low-key OP bloodlines because it doesn't really have anything special. In third place, it could be Doku Togoku. This ability, this bloodline is actually one of the best combo bloodlines of the game. The first ability has no end lag, so it's a good block breaker. You can use abilities right after it. C-Spec is basically just our better Ryuji Kenichi Z-Spec. Just because you can't actually use abilities when the balls come down, you can't actually attack, so you can move stack with it. And then you have the weapon spec, which does a ton of damage to people. You have the second ability, which you can't actually dash after. Oh, I just got flung out of the map. So that's actually why you don't dash during the second ability, but it can happen. It actually happens quite frequently. And then you have the third ability, which is actually quite good overall, just because if you use it before they attack you, it's a really good combo starter. So yeah, 
Doku to Goku is just really, really good in general, mainly for combos. Now coming in second place is going to be Alfie on by It's going to be coming in second, you know why. It's just a really, really good bloodline in general. The mode is absolutely amazing. The abilities of Alfie on by are absolutely amazing. They're, it's really good for PvE. It's really good just in general. The C-Spec does a ton of damage. The mode has pretty much everything you would ever want from a bloodline. It has damage, stunning combos it has pretty much everything it even has block breaks like literally everywhere so after all machines it is kind of just one of the best balloons in the game by a large margin coming in first place is going to be the newest ball in the game which is going to be kagoku now, I did actually just equip the Z-Spec. It actually goes with the Bloodline. It actually makes it a lot better. So, I'm going to go through the abilities, and then I'm going to show you guys the dimensions in every single attack. So, the first ability is obviously decent in general. It's just like, it does. It has a lot of end lag to it, so it's, so it's really hard to combo with without someone like auto-dodging out or just dodging in general. The second ability is actually really good. You actually click on someone, it actually will drag to you, but there actually is portals too. So, it does. it is a portal ability as well. So, it's actually really, really good in general. Now, the third ability is actually, you need someone one to to actually use the ability on but it actually is kind of just a combo breaker sort of ability mainly kaguku is actually just a really really good combo bloodline there's a lot of different combos you could do with it i'll probably end up doing a combo video over kaguku it's just really good for combos and then you obviously have the c spec which drains a ton of mode for people it actually does a lot of damage and then you have the weapon spec which if you click it actually will shoot a bunch of balls at people you actually can shoot it four times and mainly it's just it just drains a lot of chi that's the main issue with it so when it comes to kagoku the m1s are actually the best part of it and the dimensions which i'll show you now so i went ahead to equip the z spec which is the buddy which actually makes your m1s do a lot bigger it makes it do more damage as well so as you guys can see the m1s are bigger i'm going to go through every single dimension and actually show you guys so that this is the first dimension here which is c2 c3 is the ice dimension it makes like ice pillars come up with the rabbit it makes like this giant just ice pillars literally everywhere come up and i'm gonna show you guys now the uh lava dimension so the lava dimension right here when you actually click it actually makes lava pillars come up when you when you actually use the rabbit mode it actually makes the lava better normally it does less damage it isn't quite as big this is completely unavoidable so the m1s in the lava dimension are absolutely amazing and then obviously you have the sand dimension which is going to be tornadoes to come out with the with the rabbit mode it actually makes them a ton bigger makes them very nearly unavoidable and they actually do a ton of damage so with the dimension it actually is very very cool overall i think the stats definitely need buffed on kagoku but other than that kagoku is by far the best player in the entire game just because it has very good interactions with the z spec mode and overall it's just a really really good bloodline anyways if you guys enjoyed this video make the like particularly more subscribe guys bye bye